How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. So the brand new Z590 platform has just been announced and we have our hands on our first motherboard, the AORS Z590 Pro AX. Now it's pretty much almost the exact same as some of the other Z490 boards. So we're not actually too sure on why they brought a Z590 because we're also getting some newer CPUs down the line from Intel anyway. Uh, so which is gonna be on a new platform and all of that. We'll, we'll, we'll see, but if you are in the market for a new a motherboard for your new in the 11th gen that's coming out also quite soon, then this is going to be a motherboard that you might want to take a look at because it is also one of the more affordable motherboards even though we only have the Z590 boards. So yeah, let's quickly take a look at the Aorus Pro AX, see what we get inside the box, how the board looks and just go over some of the specs. So let's quickly get it out here. So firstly, we do have the board itself, which we're going to just put here on the side. Inside the box, you do have the manual, which is always actually quite handy, especially for motherboards. I know usually we joke or joke and say we're going to throw it away, but for motherboards, they're actually quite important. So yeah, keep that safe. And then we do have some uh, multilingual installation guide. You do have a little badge here that you can stick on something if you want to. And underneath all of that, you do have your RGB cable, extender cable right here. You do have your wireless and antenna, which looks like a shark. You do have your front panel connector, which is always handy. Get a single M.2 screw backup, which is nice. Oh, and another one, that's cool. And this is a noise a meter para detector cable or a thermal cable. That's what you get. And another M.2 screw. I'm actually glad three M.2 screws, not bad at all, because that's usually something that I actually lose quite a lot because it's so bloody tiny. And then you do have four SATA cables. All right, so now let's move on towards the motherboard, which is actually quite a bit heavy and it looks pretty nice. There we go. So I'm gonna leave it on its anti-static bag just to be safe. But here is the Z590 Aorus Pro. And it looks actually pretty nice. It does have a nice, a lot of armor here. And then we do also have uh, some peels that we can uh, do, which let's quickly try that and see if we can get some ASMR action going on here. No, it failed. That was very on talk <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Here we go again. All right, that's the one. And then the second one. Uh, that was also a fail. You're not a very good feeler. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Five minutes later. All right, so that is all of the peel action. Let's quickly just go over the rest of the board, see all of the design aesthetics and so on, because it actually looks pretty decent. You get, again, a lot of these armor design. The AR cover does look pretty cool. The VRMs also look pretty decent. And of course, you still get your orange thermal paste and uh, thermal pads underneath the VRMs. Uh, which we'll have to see a bit of a closer look at. All right, so that is it for the quick design overall. Let's quickly go over the rest of the specs and the parts. So starting off with the CPU, of course, this is an LGA 1200 socket, which is going to work for the 10th generation and then also the uh, 11th generation coming out uh, probably in a, in a few months or whatever, quite soon. Um, but of course, we're gonna get the 700 socket, 1700 socket, later on in the year as well if rumors are to believe so weird what's going on but anyway so you can use your 10th generation cpus on these or vice versa uh let's quickly go over the uh, vrms here because uh, so far it does look a pretty good and also again z490 was pretty high spec so i am expecting these boards to overclock quite well 
also. Um, from the specs, we could find that it does have a 12 plus one power phase, which is a 90 amp uh, smart power stage. It does use a tantalum polymer uh, capacitor array and it, the VRMs are cooled by uh, Gigabyte's new uh, Fins Array Cooling 2 system and that uses louvered cooling fins that is coated in nanocarbon. That sounds way too smart for me. <laughs> so yeah, it should perform uh, quite well. Again, 90 apps is a pretty high end. Just some of the super, super expensive boards drives to around like 120. So 90 amps is a pretty high spec. So you're not gonna have to worry if you spare it up with an i7 or i9, it's gonna work great for that. And you'll be able to overclock it quite a bit without worrying uh, about temps and so on. All right, so moving on towards our memory, we do have a four a DDR4 slots here that does have a max capacity of 128 gigs. And then also uh, on, on the website, it says it goes up to 3,200 uh, megahertz on the specs page, but then on a different page, it says it goes up to 5,000 megahertz. So I'm gonna take the 5,000 megahertz because 3,200 is a bit too low. Uh, so 5,000 should probably be the case, of course, with an XMP over a clock. So it's gonna be a great there. And you do also have a Oris's armor here, which if you do install your memory and you push quite hard, uh, it's not gonna uh, bend the board and it's actually going to protect your entire board and your um, DDR4 slots. So that's great. Moving on towards our PCI Express slots, you do have three PCI Express slots here, but only the top one has the armor as well. Again, the same thing, once installing your, your GPU, it's just going to prevent the board from bending and then also just prevent it from sagging too much, which might damage your board if you do have like a uh, RTX 3090, which is just a massive card. So you do have uh, that. But as for our uh, top PCI Express slot, so it is a PCI Express 4.0 slot. So of course, we are able to use some of the newer GPUs with that, which is also PCI Express 4, but it doesn't really improve performance going from PCI Express 3 to PCI Express 4 currently. So it's not really the biggest thing, but you can of course add some extension, uh, some expansion cards to use the uh, the extra bandwidth, like uh, Aorus's crazy 15 gigabytes per second uh, external uh, piece of space SSD. That thing is just crazy, which we saw a while back. But anyway, moving on. So it is a PCI Express a four, whereas the other two down here are also 16 slot cards, but it only runs at a four X speed. So perfect for if you want to add expansion cards, a sound card, capture cards, and so on, you can put that in there. But also these ones are only PCI Express three. So that's the only drawback for them, if you want to call it that. But I'm moving on towards our storage. This is kind of where it gets a bit crazy because you actually get four M.2 slots with three of them being PCI Express 4, which this is where it, the PCI Express 4 really comes in handy because SSDs are getting crazy, crazy fast. Like I mentioned again, the uh, 15 gigabytes a second uh, PCI Express card that you get uh, got from uh, uh, Aorus, but now you have a lot faster normal M.2 style ones and do have the uh, top one right here and then the two here in the middle and then the uh, bottom one. So the bottom one is the only one running off the uh, chipset and that is only PCI Express 3, whereas the other three are PCI Express 4 and connect straight towards the CPU for faster speeds. Um, now also the top one right here is a, a bit shorter than the two here in the middle. These ones go up to the extremely long 22110 uh, M.2, so quite long, whereas the other one is only going towards He's like on 2280. There we go. So you do have that, and same goes for the bottom one here. It's a 2210. Now also see that all four of your M.2s do feature uh, heat spreaders, which is also really nice. You don't need to go buy anything separate or get it with a, a M.2. So that's nice. But what also makes it a bit more unique is that because some of the newer M.2s actually come out with double-sided uh, controllers where it is on both sides of the M.2, 
those ones can get quite hot. So the new Thermal Guard 2 actually has a heat spreader on a both side. So that's just going to help in, uh, increase uh, the cooling performance even more. So great stuff, Aorus. Um, yeah, I just think that's a nice feature that they added and I haven't seen that on some of the other boards yet. So kudos. And then just finally for our normal boring storage, here on the side, we do have our six SATA 3 ports. But something to keep in mind is that if you do use the bottom M.2 slot, it actually disables the SATA 1, which is, I believe, that one because this is SATA 0. But only if you use it on a SATA M.2, whereas it, if it's a PCI Express, like NVMe, then it's fine. Then it doesn't turn off. So just something to keep in mind. There's always some bandwidth restrictions going on between the PCI Express and the SATAs and vice versa and so on. So if you forget, just check out the manual. Everything is inside there, which is handy. Again, don't throw the manual away. We are made. We don't need manuals. <laughs> no, we aren't meant for this time. <laughs> it's what's called a motherboard. <laughs> <laughs> motherboard. <laughs> I actually didn't think about that. Nice. <laughs> Your mother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so moving on towards our I.O., we do have our integrated I.O. shield, which is always a bonus, really like that. But for our I.O., we do get a four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, the blue ones up here. Uh, we do have our Wi-Fi connection, which is a Wi-Fi 6 AX200 plus, also, of course, a Bluetooth 5.1. So it's nice and fast with Wi-Fi 6. We're gonna see that a lot more. We do have a integrated DisplayPort connector, a version 1.2, if you do want to for some reason, I uh, use her uh, on board out. And then also you do have a four USB 2.0 ports, of course, just for your normal uh, uh, peripherals and so on. And then down here, we do have our USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2, which is our 20 gigabits per second uh, USB type C. And then our uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2 non X2 ports, down here in your red. So those ones are only 10 gigabits a second. And then of course, we do have our uh, ethernet port, which is a 2.5 gig ethernet port. And following just for our 5.1 audio connection, audio connections with a SPDIF out port. All right, so moving on towards the rest of the connections on the board. Of course, you just get your standard 24 pin for your motherboard power and then your eight plus four pin for your CPU power. Uh, and apparently it does feature a solid pins, which is stronger and also reduces uh, electricity and so on. It's just gonna help out with preventing your board from frying. Then uh, next up for our fan headers, we do actually have quite a lot here. So you do have two here in the corner. You'd have a two here, one here, and then a three down here. So quite a few fans that you can connect up, of course, for your CPU up here. Uh, for your RGB, which is of course very important, you do have your 12 volt and your five volt addressable RGB header up here. And then also down here for a total of four RGB connectors. For our reset button, you do have a quick flash plus button here. You do have your LED post indicators down here here, which is just going to be nice and handy if you want to see if something isn't booting properly. So that is a nice a feature. And for some additional connectors, you do of course have your USB 3.1 Gen 2 connector here, your USB 3.1 Gen 1 connector, and then also your USB 2 and a 2 down here. And just something new that they're adding towards boards as well is that you do have a Thunderbolt header, but also I believe it's only for Intel. So just keep that in mind. All right, so I did actually forget one little important part about the board, and that is that you do get your little RGB strip up here. And that's the only RGB you get on the board itself, which is a bit strange. Like me and Ron also talked about this uh, a while back, like the Aorus boards was like crazy RGB, which I loved. And now it's very, very minimalistic. So 
It's, let, you guys let me know, do you like the crazy RGB that of course you can turn off or do you like the more minimalistic design and then later on possibly add your own RGB uh, or just normal lighting uh, with some fans and RGB strips. Yeah, let me know down in the comments. I'm actually curious about this. All right, so that's pretty much it for our look at the new Aorus Z590 Pro AX motherboard. Now pricing wise, there's no pricing officially yet, but we believe Leave if we look at the pricing for the previous Z590 boards that it's going to retail for around $300 uh, which is pretty up there especially because we even with the Z490 platform we didn't get any more budget related boards so Z470 or H470 or whatever so if you're looking to build a budget board that's not really going to be an option per se but if you're looking for something uh, very high end, uh, then this is of course definitely a board that you can uh, take a look at. It's gonna be a great middle ground for your i7 CPU. Even i5 is a bit undervalued for this uh, board. So i7 or i9, I think it's gonna work perfect for this. And of course, if you do want plenty of storage, that's probably the, the best feature of this board. All of that uh, PCI Express uh, for slots that can uh, use for storage. So, that's pretty much it. I do hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. A big thanks to Aorus for sending me the board over for our unboxing. If you guys want to get it for yourself, we'll leave links in the video description once they are available. So check that out. But anyway, thanks for watching guys, and I will check all of you next time. Cheers guys.